You know, sometimes you call the play in the huddle. I called the play in the huddle previous to that break. <laughs> so we were going to talk Jay Johnson, pitching rotation, had some sound from him. And then you get to the line of scrimmage, you got a red 80! Red 80! <laughs> got to call an audible. Because Matt McMahon has done it again. Sean Phillips, seven foot, four star recruit, previously committed to NC State, now headed to Baton Rouge to basically complete this roster for the 2022 2023 season. That was probably the the most glaring hole on this roster was a rim protector, big body. They certainly bring in Cornelius Williams, who's six ten, but probably not ready to go. And Kendall Coleman's not not six foot ten, seven feet. You got KJ Williams, but you'd rather play him at the four if you possibly can. And I don't know if Sean Phillips is ready to start from day one. I don't know if he's an SEC ready player. Right now he's seven feet tall and 255, 260 pounds. He's a big man, and he is coming to Baton Rouge. Matt McMahon is, just continues to to blow me away. I don't know about you, but he blows me away. <laughs> look, I, I love to just be a fly on the wall on some of these recruiting calls. I don't know what he's telling these kids, but, look, he, he's doing a phenomenal job to, you know, completely make this roster 180. I was looking at a TikTok a couple weeks ago. It was like the entire locker room empty, entire, you know, PMAC empty, entire practice facility empty. And he, it seems like overnight he, he's totally changed that around. And even getting players that were already on this team who I thought were out the door, no chance of coming. Find a way to get Mawani back. Find a way to get Justice back. Obviously, find a way to get Alan Mill back. And now, uh, to me, the last missing piece of, of this roster uh, obviously was a, was a big man, and not only a big man, a seven-footer. So when you kind of look over the landscape of the SEC, um, now some of these matchups, you feel like you got bodies that you can throw at some of these big men. We knew how much big men uh, did damage to this team last year. Now you got some bodies you can rotate in there and, and really give this team an opportunity to compete. Coach McMahon's killing it, man. Got to give it to him. Uh, on threes, got him as the 101st ranked player in the country. Uh, ESPN doesn't have that many, but they've got him as a four-star recruit. 247 has him as a three-star, 144th in the country. Rivals has him as the 50th ranked player in the country um this is this is huge and jeremy as you look at this team and the roster the way that it is constituted um i think they are average at a number of places not necessarily an elite team but there is nothing not a single spot on this roster that i can look at and say they don't have it they, they have they have ball handlers they have veterans they have a couple guys that can really shoot it they've got position versatility they've got height and size they've got you know, guys that have guys been a conference player of the year. Um, they don't, there's not a single thing I can point to and say they don't have it, which mm -hmm. is, which is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. No, no, it's huge. It's huge. And I think, you know, uh, we, we talked to, you know, when we talked to coach Wade last year, he was like, man, I wish I would have did this. I wish I would have recruited this way. I wish, I think coach McMahon is, is doing a good job checking those boxes and, and finding, you know, everything that this team in me, you got bigs who can rebound and defend. You got guards who can score it. Um, obviously, you got multiple guys who can defend it on the outside, like Mawani. So um, this team checks a lot of boxes. No, I'm not saying they're going to be a double by in the SEC tournament. No, I'm not saying that. But I do think they're going to be worlds more competitive uh, than than what we thought going into this offseason. And obviously, um, obviously, what they did, you know, kind of in the year last year. So I, I, you got to like I keep saying, man, Coach Higman, I don't know what he's doing, but keep it up, man. You're doing a phenomenal job. I'll, I'll just take the sanctions and throw them out because we can sit here and speculate on it and we just don't know. So it's not even really worth having that full discussion. So if I just take the sanction and throw them out, say they don't exist, this team to me is middle of the pack in the SEC, which puts you near the bubble for the NCAA tournament. When we came on and did a segment on this show about where the three programs were with men's basketball, baseball, and football with every school in, in the conference, and we we're trying to see where LSU ranked, I had LSU's basketball as in the worst shape in the conference because you had no players and no real hope. For me to come on, you know, whatever that it was a month later and say, hey, they could make the tournament next year, I... I'm just, I'm stunned. I'm just absolutely stunned. Now, they would be a bubble team. I don't think they're as good as, as any of the LSU teams that have been in the last three or four years, depending on what you want to call the COVID year. Um, now, I could, they could prove me wrong. They could come out and really be better. I mean, there are some, yeah. I could talk myself into it. Mm -hmm. Got a veteran point guard who's been a, on a 30 win team. You've got a, a two guard who was a Team USA player. You've got the ability to play either a top 50 player in the country or a junior Nimwani Wilkinson at the four. You've got K.J. Williams at the 
at the four. I mean, at the three, you got KJ Williams at the four, who's a conference player of the year. You got a seven foot freshman that can come in. Like I could talk myself into it. Mm-hmm. I also think that they're, you know, again, I think they're average at a lot of those places, and mm-hmm. it's possible that Sean Phillips isn't ready to play at this level. A lot of seven footers, mm-hmm. it takes them some time to get used to their body with when things are moving that fast, and they've never yeah. seen it like that. So. I don't know, but it's it's fun to think about. No, it, it definitely is fun to think about. And to me, uh, the future of this program, I mean, to me, it's changed overnight just by watching what Coach McMahon is doing. I thought, you know, coming from where he come, coming from Murray State, I'm like, okay, we're probably going to have to be dealing with, you know, obviously his first sign and being a guy from Northwestern State, I'm like, okay, this is his wheelhouse. You're going to be getting a, a bunch of guys, you know, two, three-star guys. but They just um, want to play on ESPN. <laughs> yeah, and, and, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I thought that'd be his wheelhouse, but now he's showing, like, he can go get guys from the transfer portal. He can re- recruit incoming freshmen. And so when you kind of project that out to the future, now you can see possibly some McDonald's All-Americans and some of these things, especially when the sanctions are going. So I think it just looks a lot better for this program. It's a lot more healthy than it was a couple months ago. And, like, uh, projecting out to the future, um, I'm super confident in what Coach McMahon can do for this program. And this is a recycled conversation, but that happens when, when things happen. We re- revisit things. If you listen to us for two hours every single day, mm-hmm. you'll hear some things that have been repeated, but a lot of our listenership doesn't listen two hours every single day, so it's it's worth bringing up again. Um, for him to get K.J. Williams and Trey Hannibal and Juice Williams from his old school, okay, that's a pretty big advantage mm-hmm. that you've already signed these guys. They know you. That's okay. You can make that happen. For you to go get – you know, Derek Fountain from Mississippi State, who wasn't really a factor for them. Okay, you know, that's that's fine. It's from around the around the area, whatever. You go to, to Northwestern State and get Kendall Coleman. Like, that's a guy who, you know, would is just died to play at LSU. He was from Louisiana, went to Captain Shreve. Uh, he's playing in front of, you know, 1,100 people in, in most games. It, it, I, I get it. For you to go get – and Cornelius Williams in the same deal. He was committed to you at Murray State. Okay, that's fine. For you to go get Tyrell Ward and Sean Phillips, who a lot of schools wanted in 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 Power Five circles, and to get them to LSU is a statement, and it is something that we could not have known about Matt McMahon because recruiting to Murray State and recruiting to LSU are not in the same ballpark at all. Murray State, you're trying to find some diamonds in the rough who you help, help who you hope help you two years from now, not right out of the shoot. You don't have to deal with John Calipari in the same gym as you. You're not having to deal with Bill Self in the same gym as you. And I'm not saying that these guys are going to go to Kentucky and Kansas, but I'm telling you that they were thought of very highly by a lot of schools in the mid-major, I mean, in the Power Five. And for Matt McMahon to go in there and and make that happen is starting to prove to me that, yeah, he can coach basketball. He did it at Missouri State. He can swim in these waters, too, and get mm-hmm. guys to come to Baton Rouge. And that's... That's the package. That's what yeah. you want. Yeah, that's exactly what you want. I think, you know, I, I got to continue to give credit to Scott Wilbert. I know a lot of people are questioning, you know, his ability to hire coaches and everything. But I, I think with all the coaches he's hired at, at LSU thus far, especially it seems like it all just happened recently. We all got all these new coaches. But um, uh, he's done a phenomenal job. And Coach McMahon, um, I think he's doing doing that job. And he's got to get this basketball program back where it needs to be. And, um, yeah, I, I think I got to temper my expectation. I got to change it. I, I thought, you know, maybe two, three, four, star, maybe, maybe. But no, nah, man, it, it's, it's looking good for us. I know it's a lot of work, not a lot of stuff to do uh, going forward. But right now, it definitely looks a lot better for the program. So your front court uh, entering the year in terms of your four and your five spots, um, you've got Derek Fountain, 6'8", six, 6'9", six, player who played at Mississippi State. You've got Kendall Coleman, who's 6'8", and – was 15 and 10 guy at Northwestern State, even though they were a high tempo team. Of course, you've got KJ Williams, who is the Ohio Valley Player of the Year at 6'10, 250 pounds. That's three guys. Plus, you've got Cornelius Williams, who is 6'10. You bring in your freshman class. Sean Phillips, 7'255. Jalen Reed, 6'10. You have Jalen Reed at 6'10. Sean Phillips is 7 foot. Cornelius Williams at 6'10. K.J. Williams at 6'10". That's four guys 6'10 or taller that you've got on your bench, not to mention you've got you know a guy who's still been a really good point guard at Murray State and a Team USA guy at the two. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's, it's impressive. Yeah. I, I, don't, yeah. I, I don't know that it's as impressive as what LSU was going to try it out there next year with uh, if everything had, had come together with Julian Phillips and Trey Orr and, and, and you got Adam Miller to come back and all that, like, you can have the discussion, but it's it's a team worth watching. They'll at least be fun to watch. They make the NCAA may come down and say, "Hey, you can't play in the tournament in November," but they'll you know those guys aren't going to go anywhere at that point. You got to just play the season out. 
they'll be fun to watch. They'll win some games, and that's uh, more than I could say. I am stunned by the performance of Matt McMahon as he pulls in, if you just missed it, a four-star center, seven-footer Sean Phillips, who was once an NC State signee, a coaching turnover, jumped in uh, back into open his recruitment, and LSU has snagged him up to basically round out this basketball roster. Should be uh, should be impressive. It's ranked as the 16th best class in the nation. Did not see that coming. Thanks so much for watching Hun Hill on YouTube. Now do us a favor. Hit the red subscribe button below and throw us a like. We'll see you next time.